The legend says the tomb sits atop this peak. Dragon Age Origins, a stunning world where you make complex moral choices and engage in bone-crushing combat against massive and terrifying creatures. This is a story-rich fantasy RPG from developers Bioware that released almost 15 years ago. Yeah, being released November 3rd, 2009, this was the first entry into the Dragon Age universe, and boy, was it a good one. Despite the game being out for a decade and a half, I've never played it. And I'll tell you why I never played it. It's because exactly one week after Dragon Age Origins released, on November 10th, 2009, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 released. And well, that took up a large portion of my gaming time. In fact, all of my gaming time went into that game. I went to bed thinking about Modern Warfare 2. I sat in class thinking about Modern Warfare 2. I skipped football practices because of Modern Warfare 2. I lived and breathed that game, and I'm sure some of you can relate. But yeah, that's why I never played Origins when it released. But that changed for me this year. This year, we all got the privilege to witness one of the best gaming trailers of the new generation, Dragon Age Veilguard. All right, I'm joking. I'm joking. That shit was ass. <laughs> The, that was Dragon Age Suicide Squad, and you won't convince me otherwise. Now, I love me a dark and gritty fantasy RPG. So before this trailer, and because I've never played Dragon Age, I was genuinely excited for this game. And then, after the trailer, I was like, okay, whatever, no big deal. I'm no longer interested. Keep in mind, I am new to this franchise. The target audience for Dragon Age Veilguard is me. Bioware is crafting the graphics and combat this way to try and appeal to people like me. But without knowing anything about Dragon Age, I was not a fan of this trailer, and I moved on with my day. Like I said, it was no big deal. I didn't have any time invested in the Dragon Age. I didn't know much about the universe, so I had no real attachment to Dragon Age, and this didn't really bother me. But then the fans of Dragon Age spoke out against this game, and it was getting mass downvoted. Videos were being made left and right about how tone deaf the game is, and this got me interested. Surely, the changes couldn't have been that drastic from the first game. You know, the game that put the franchise on the map? Surely, <laughs> they wouldn't completely change the game that accumulated thousands and thousands of fans. That would certainly be a dumb decision. And boy, was I wrong. That is exactly what they did. Take a look at this clip from the Dragon Age Origins trailer. It's outstanding how different the atmosphere feels from this trailer to the Dragon Age Veilguard trailer. It's literally a completely different game, and they just slapped Dragon Age on the title because it's an already established IP and probably easy money. But hey, if anything good came out of the Veilguard trailer, it was that I, Pixel Sean, was now interested in Dragon Age Origins. So I decided to give the game a shot, and it sucked me in rapid. I put over 60 hours into the game so far and just beat the main story the other day. There's still a bunch of side content left for me to explore as well. It was an incredible experience, and it aged very, very well. That is why I want to put a video like this together. If the outrage towards Dragon Age Vilgar got me interested into the world of Thetis, then I'm sure there are several others out there wondering if they should give this game a fair shake as well. And hey, if you like what you've seen so far with Dragon Age Vilgar, more power to you. This isn't a video about how your opinion is wrong and my opinion is right. You're allowed to like what you like, and I'm allowed to not like what I don't like. So without further ado, let's get into the game and its features. Everything you'll see on screen is from the first hour of gameplay, so outside of that, this video will be spoiler free. When you first boot up the game, you'll enter the character creation screen. Here you can select your gender and your race, either a human, elf, or dwarf, and your class, either a warrior, mage, or rogue. After you decide on your character, you then get to select your very first important player choice, the background of your character. This choice of background will determine the prologue you get to play through and experience, each of these prologues being roughly one to two hours of gameplay. For me, I chose the human noble background, and that is what you are seeing in this video. The other background options are mage, city elf, dalish elf, dwarf noble, and dwarf commoner. This background choice not only shapes your initial one to two hours of gameplay, but also unlocks several exclusive NPC interactions and quests. It quickly highlighted the incredible potential this game offers. After you decide your background, you move on to customize the rest of your character's face, which for a pretty old game, it had a decent amount of options. Then you get to spend your first five attribute points. The attributes you can dump points into are strength, dexterity, willpower, magic, cunning, and constitution. These attributes are pretty robust and have different effects depending on your character class. After determining those attributes, you then get to select one skill. The skills being coercion, your speech, stealing, trap making, survival, being able to detect nearby enemies, 
herbalism, potion making, poison making, combat training, and combat tactics, which we will touch on later in this video. Finally, you get to spend two points on talents, basically your core skills in the game, and that will determine your playstyle. The talent trees are extremely robust and different depending on your character class and subclass. I wanted to play as a dual weapon rogue, so most of my talent points went into that tree. This game offers several talents to cater towards any playstyle you want, so pick what you like. And after that, you get a cutscene and enter into the prologue. In the prologue, we get our first real taste of the dialogue system in Dragon Age Origins. The system is fairly standard for RPGs, with a silent protagonist and players selecting responses from a list of options. These choices can influence the direction of conversations and the overall narrative. Players often face moral dilemmas, and their decisions can lead to different outcomes, affecting the story, relationships with companions, and the world state. Companions have approval ratings that change based on the player's dialogue choices. High approval can unlock personal quests, special abilities, and deeper relationships, while low approval can lead to conflicts or even companions leaving the party. You can also use your character's skills to persuade or intimidate NPCs during conversations. Success in these checks depends on your attributes and skill levels, resulting in various outcomes. The dialogue options frequently lead to branching paths in the storyline creating a personalized experience with different choices, resulting in varied endings and character fates. The game features full voice acting for all characters, enhancing immersion and making conversations feel more dynamic and engaging. I rarely felt as if there was something I wanted to say in a conversation that I couldn't. The only drawback was that our character remained silent. With all the other NPCs being voiced by talented and convincing actors, some scenes felt less emotional than they might have with a voiced protagonist. Overall, the dialogue system in Dragon Age Origins is designed to give you a sense of agency and create a narrative that evolves based on your decisions. The companions also have some of the best banter depending on what decisions you make, which is always a plus and keeps you engaged in the dialogue. Working in tandem with the dialogue is the writing and quest design. The game is set in the fantasy world of Thetis, which is meticulously crafted with a rich history, diverse cultures, and complex politics. The lore is woven into the main story, side quests, and character interactions. You can also read a lot more of the lore and the vigorous codex that contains anything from main characters and monsters to history and culture. Characters in Dragon Age Origins are multidimensional with distinct personalities, backgrounds, and motivations. Companions have their own story arcs and personal quests that reveal more about their histories and personalities. The main narrative is an epic tale of heroism, betrayal, and survival against a backdrop of war and dark magic. Players assume the role of a Grey Warden, tasked with uniting a fractured kingdom to combat the monstrous Darkspawn. The game features a hefty mix of main quests that advance the central storyline and side quests that explore the world and its inhabitants. Side quests often offer significant rewards and additional lore. Quests often encourage exploration, leading you to uncover hidden areas and secret items. The world is filled with locations that offer both immediate rewards and long-term narrative payoffs. Some quests incorporate puzzles or strategic combat scenarios, adding variety to the gameplay. These elements require you to think critically and adapt your strategies. And speaking of the combat and strategies, the combat in Dragon Age Origins is a blend of real-time action and tactical strategy. You can pause the game at any time to issue commands to your party members, allowing for careful planning and coordination. A helpful tip that I wish I learned earlier is the pause at start of combat gameplay setting. This will automatically pause the game upon entering combat, allowing you to assess the battlefield and determine the best way to approach your enemies. You get to control a party of up to four characters, each with unique abilities and roles. The party composition can be adjusted to suit different combat situations, with characters specializing in roles like tank, healer, or damage dealer. One minor complaint I had, and this was specifically just with like the more difficult content, was that there would be many times I wanted to swap one of my party members out with another party member that I left back at the camp. And if I was in a dungeon, I would have to walk all the way back to the beginning so I could fast travel to the camp and swap them out. Then I would have to walk all the way back to where I was at in the dungeon. It would have been nice to swap whenever I could as long as there were no enemies nearby. Not a huge complaint, but it did leave me selecting some of the more overpowered characters like the mages instead of bringing along some of the other companions. There were many times I wanted to experiment with a certain group of companions, but ultimately did not because I knew if it didn't work out, then it would be very, very annoying to head back to camp to swap them out again. More on the multitude of companions in this game though, each character can access a wide range of abilities and skills based on their class and specialization. Abilities include offensive spells, healing, crowd control, 
and various combat maneuvers. Combat often takes place in varied environments that can influence tactics. You can use high ground, choke points, and environmental hazards to your advantage. In Dragon Age Origins, the combat tactics system allows you to automate and optimize your party member's behavior in battle using a customizable if-then conditional logic framework. Each character has a tactics menu where multiple priority ordered actions can be set, starting with a limited number of slots that expand as you level up and unlock specific talents. You can create detailed strategies by setting conditions for health management, buffs, debuffs, offensive actions, targeting priorities, and crowd control. The game does offer default presets, which does offer a decent starting point, but these can be tailored to fit your individual playstyle. The system enhances combat efficiency, strategic depth, and adaptability, allowing characters to respond dynamically to changing situations. By automating basic actions, like your party members healing themselves when their health falls below a specified threshold, you can focus on making key decisions during combat, ensuring a smoother and more engaging gameplay experience. Regular adjustments to tactics based on new abilities and different enemies keep strategies effective and aligned with evolving combat challenges. This right here was what made me fall in love with this game. I love problem solving, and this system allows you to solve the problems and challenges in a multitude of ways. The way I kill a boss in this game can be completely different and rather probably will be completely different than the way you kill the boss. And that not only enhances the replayability of Dragon Age Origins, but it also enhances the community and culture of this game too. As much as I do love this game, it does have some flaws. One major flaw being that the PC version is absolutely trash. The game failed to launch numerous times, crashed numerous times, and I did encounter many bugs. Most weren't too game breaking, such as getting stuck at the top of stairs, but there is one major bug that completely ruined my experience of the final quest. I won't say what that quest contains, but let's just say during the final encounter, the terrain was completely gone. All I could see was the NPCs. The rest was just an endless void of nothing. So yeah, that kind of sucked. And the fact that you can't respec in the game also kind of sucks too. I do believe there are mods for most of these bugs and gameplay features. At least I know there's a mod that allows you to respec. So that is something good to know. Any of you that know any good mods for this game, feel free to leave a comment. I'm interested in doing another playthrough of this game with mods and playing this time as a mage because they are just completely busted. With all that said, the positives outweigh the negatives by a significant margin. So much so that I would consider the negatives to be almost negligible. Besides that endless void I encountered during the endgame. Anyhow, thank you for joining me and listening to my experience through Dragon Age Origins and my thoughts about everything this game has to offer. This classic RPG has truly stood the test of time with its rich storytelling, engaging combat, and deep character choice and consequence. If you haven't played it yet, I highly recommend giving it a try especially if you're a fan of immersive fantasy world. Again, thanks for watching. Take excellent care of yourselves and goodbye. Back. Maker, help us all. Everybody.